I am, uh, I'm feeling fine. I've, I've uh, it was actually, uh, I, I had an, an, uh, like a, an appendicitis that just came from nowhere. And I was mm -hmm. with my sister, we were doing some work on one of our new books. And I woke up with a stomach ache. And I had a stomach ache all through the, the, the evening. And then the next day, woke, still had a stomach ache. And it started getting progressively worse during the day. And my sister kept checking in. We were both by ourselves in my place in Palm Springs. And she didn't tell me, but she was starting to panic because okay. I've never been sick. Mm. And so she's never seen me in any kind of state. When she came in the bedroom and I was vomiting in the, the, sorry to be graphic, vomiting in the sink, I collapsed on the floor, I couldn't move, and I just said to her, get me to the hospital. Mm. And she's, she, she literally got in the car. We're driving to the hospital, to the doctor first, because um, I wanted to see my, my own doctor. They, that's the way it works in the States with the healthcare system. So I, I went to the, we're driving the car and I said to her, Carol, can you drive faster because I'm in pain? She says, I'm already doing 18 of 55. <laughs> I had no clue of anything, but oh. I got to the, the doctor. He said, you have to go to the hospital. I said, can my sister drive me? And he said, no, you have to go in an ambulance because if something happens, in, you have to be with someone that can take care of you. And I got to the hospital. Get, uh, they said, you've got to go into surgery. The, when I got to go into surgery, I'm lying. They're putting me on the, the a table for the surgery, and they lie you on top of this thing to hold your head up. And all I could think of was I'm, I'm not, I, I didn't think I was going to come out of the surgery. Yeah. So the thoughts that go through your mind, yes, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And I was by myself. I didn't get to see my husband, Scott. I didn't get to see my mom and dad. No. I didn't get to see my sister. I was rushed in, and I'm thinking, I'm not going to come out of this. And I had to sign papers that said resuscitate and all sorts of stuff. Anyway, as I'm about to go under, and they're putting a catheter in me, this guy looks at me and he goes, I love your work. Can I have a selfie when you come out of surgery? <laughs> Did you report him? Because that is so wrong. No, I thought it was funny. Oh, yeah. God. I thought it was when, funny. when did you have the operation? How long ago? <sighs> About um, two, two months ago. Oh, so it's two, really oh, recent. Yeah, there you are. Yeah, wow. there I am. Right after it. Yeah. Boy, I know, did I let my family know that I was upset that they weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I was cr when I came out of the anesthetic, the nurse said to me, she said, you burst into tears. Oh, John. And, I, and, all I, and what I said to her, I said I could see my grandmother. And I was talking oh. to my grand. But also, anaesthetic does make you emotional. Correct. And it kind of, so there's a mind altering. Yeah. But listen, you're hale and hearty and you're into panto. I am. Hey! Oh, no, you're not. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, no, you're And there's only one panto that John Barrowman could be in. And what is that one? <laughs> it was Dick Whittington. <laughs> there course. you go, Dick Whittington. Yes, in Manchester. Um, uh, oh, look, that, oh, look yeah. at you. Oh, that's been so airbrushed. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that! Woo! Yeah. You, when you're, as soon as you're with anybody Scottish, your Glaswegian comes out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What accent do you do the panto in? Well, the panto, you... it's gonna. I have to make that that decision because when I was in Glasgow, obviously with the Crankies, we would we would all, yeah. you know, I'd be speaking Scottish. But sometimes when it's we're south, I they speak Scottish and I'm. American, so okay. we'll, we'll see. It's interesting. It slips yeah. out now and then. Yeah. That was oh, so cute. Doesn't it John? just? Yeah. Yes. Um, now, John, earlier we uh, we sent you on a little secret squirrel mission <laughs> yes. um, into our lovely audience to gather some rather sordid details. We couldn't think of anyone else we would rather gather sordid details. Um, and I know that you have picked your favourite. It's time for... Loose Confessions. <laughs> I love it. Audience members who did take part, it's anonymous. So don't, well, I was going to say, don't worry too much. We might not say your name, but there's loads of cameras in here. It's anonymous, but I have a photographic memory and I know who put these things in. So which ones are your favorite? Well, uh, I, first of all, some of you had some really horrible <laughs> confessions, Good. and we chose ones that would be, you know, nice for, for television and not really nice. Anyway, this is my first favorite. Are you ready for this? Yes. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. And yeah. look at them, they all look like butter wouldn't melt. Don't, don't make a face, because we'll figure out who it is. I spat in my husband's <gasps> cup of tea because, <laughs> because he really annoyed me. I then watched him drink it. <gasps> who was it? No, don't ask. We're not, we we're said not it would be an anonymous, but the thing is, Anyone else ever done anything, something to that extent like that? Or no? Spitting in someone's no. face. No. I, I, I have. Oh. oh. Okay, so where's the quiet? No, do you, know, do you know what I did? I'm not going to say who it was, but it was the same person who was mean to me about the fertility thing. And uh, they were coming to stay, so I farted on their pillow. And <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
pillows in and I, I just saw the pillow there. And so I literally <laughs> just went over and I just went... <laughs> and then I smoothed it I down. It was a really delicate you one. Can, it was a little delicate. And I just thought, as she went to bed that night... <laughs> if it's delicate, we're going to call that pooting on a pillow. <laughs>